Hello everyone, this is Mr. Caviani, and by the end of this video, you should be able to calculate the linear momentum of objects involved in a collision, identify and label collisions as elastic, inelastic, or perfectly inelastic, and apply the law of conservation of linear momentum to solve problems involving two bodies colliding in one dimension. To begin, I'd like you to recall that momentum is just mass in motion. And so in this way, we can think about momentum as the property of an object to resist stopping, essentially. So the more momentum something has, the more difficult that thing is to stop. And because momentum involves both, both mass and motion, the units involve a mass multiplied by a speed. So typically when you're using your base SI units, that would be a kilogram times a meter Per second. That's just the standard form of mass and of speed. Now, it's also worth mentioning that if you're dealing with a mass in grams or speed in centimeters per second, you can just report the units that you've used. But as far as base SI units go, kilograms, meters, and seconds are our defaults. Now, momentum is a vector quantity, and what that means is that momentum has direction. Momentum involves velocity, and we know velocity is a vector as well. So momentum can be positive or negative depending on the direction the object is traveling in. And so once again, the formula for calculating the momentum of an object is just that object's mass multiplied by that object's velocity. So if we take a look at an example, this 18-wheeler truck has a mass of 16,000 kilograms. And let's say that it's traveling very slowly at a velocity of one meter per second. Well, its momentum would just be its mass multiplied by its velocity, nothing squared here. And that would be 16,000 kilogram meter per second. Now, this little smart car right below the 18-wheeler is actually going to have the same amount of momentum as the 18-wheeler. So the fact is that the smart car is 1 20th of the mass of the 18-wheeler. It's only 800 kilograms, but it's traveling at a velocity that is 20 times as great. It's traveling at a speed of 20 meters per second. And so if we multiply those two together, we actually get 16,000 kilogram meter seconds as well. And so I'm trying to illustrate the idea that momentum is not just how big something is, it's also about how fast it's going. And so each of these the 18-wheeler and the smart car are equally hard to stop. The smart car is compensating for the fact that it is less massive by traveling faster to get the same momentum as the 18-wheeler. And so I just wanted to show you a basic example of how to calculate momentum and remind you that momentum is not just about mass, but also about velocity equally. All right. When we talk about collisions, we observed that the momentum of a system, in other words, the momentum of a group of objects, is conserved or kept the same for every collision in the absence of external forces. What that means is when two objects collide, as long as there are no other forces acting on them outside of the system, the momentum of both objects before the collision and after the collision should be the same together. This is illustrated by the diagram on the right. It's showing here that the net force exerted on the system externally is zero. There are no forces acting on the objects that are not inside the system. Friction is not present in this case because friction would be an external force. So when we assume that momentum is conserved, we're ignoring the effects of friction. We are not accounting, though, for any internal force of collision because that is an internal force and we don't need to consider that. So what that means is, mathematically, we could say that the delta, or the change here, in the momentum of the system is equal to zero. In other words, there is no change in the momentum of the system. Each object's momentum will change, but together, their momentums will sum to the same amount before and after. I've gone ahead and summarized this down below. So this is an important concept to consider when solving problems, because by assuming that there are no external forces, we are able to compare the momentums of both objects before and after a collision. Let's take a look and see how we can apply this to solve some problems.